Hello my friends and welcome to this Red Gaming Tech video with myself Amata, I hope you're keeping well. Small bit of housekeeping before I dive into today's topics. Paul is currently just working on a review today as well as a fun project that I think you guys are really going to enjoy as well as taking a little bit more time off just to fully recover. He is obviously feeling much better but still not 100% so just taking uh, some well deserved time off as well as putting in some work to those projects. But Let's dive into today's topics, shall we? And we are going to kick off today's proceedings with an update to the RTX 30 mining GPUs, which we discussed yesterday. So, if you haven't seen our video yesterday, please do give, do give it a watch. Paul goes into quite a bit of detail about the brand new mining GPUs from NVIDIA, as well as the significant nerf to the mining performance of the RTX 3060. Now, it's this that I want to give you a quick update on. So we did speculate on how this would actually be achieved by NVIDIA, whether or not it was just going to be on the driver level or what have you. And now we do actually have confirmation thanks to a tweet from Brian Del Rizzo that this is not the case. It's not just driver level. But let me not put words into his mouth. Let me quote you him directly. He said, quote, it's not just a driver thing. There is a secure handshake between the driver, the RTX 30 silicon and the BIOS firmware that prevents removal of the hash rate limiter. So, there you have it, my friends. Now, I'm sure I know what you're thinking. A, a really dedicated expert, you know, elite hacksaw miner is probably going to be able to get past this, but that sort of person is probably, you know, one in a hundred or, or whatever. I'm just pulling numbers out of the air. But my point is that beginner or intermediate level miners or people who just mine on the side or what have you, they're just not going to to put the work in to be able to use the RTX 3060 to, to mine. They're more slightly going to use a different GPU or perhaps pick up one of the dedicated mining GPUs which NVIDIA are going to be releasing. And again, if you do want the skinny on those, go watch our video yesterday. So I just wanted to give you guys a quick update that it is not just on the driver level. So with that said, let's move swiftly on to our second topic for today, which is going to be about the new Xbox FPS boost feature. So what I actually have for you today is a bit of an update on how Microsoft actually created the new Xbox FPS Boost feature. But I just want to give you a quick sort of TLDR on what this even is in case you guys missed it. Now I'm sure you guys have been hearing the rumours and reports that we were going to be seeing some sort of update to Xbox backwards compatibility where we're going to be seeing a frame rate boost for certain titles. And Microsoft did reveal this a couple of days ago, February 17th. And here's what Microsoft had to say about it. Quote, as we detailed in October with the increased CPU, GPU and memory from our new consoles, all of your existing games look and play better. With certain titles, we can make the experience even better. All with no work required by the developer and no update needed by the gamer. To that end, the backward compatibility team has developed FPS Boost, which employs a variety of new methods for nearly doubling and in a few instances quadrupling the original frame rate on select titles. Higher steadier frame rates means games visually smoother, resulting in more immersive gameplay. And for those of you wondering, obviously this is not a quote now, uh, the first set of backwards compatible titles which will support FPS boost are Far Cry 4, New Super Lucky's Tale, Sniper Elite 4, UFC 4 and Watch Dogs 2. And Microsoft said that, quote, we chose this initial collection of titles not only because they are popular among fans, but to highlight several different ways that FPS boosts can improve your experience. For example, new Super Lucky's Tale can now run up to 120 frames per second, and UFC 4 delivers improved frame rate performance specifically on Xbox Series S and now can run at 60 FPS. Now I do just want to stress, as Microsoft themselves also stress in this blog, which of course will be linked below if you want to give the full thing a read, it is very lengthy, I've only given you a small snippet of what they had to say. This is just the beginning. There are more titles featuring FPS, uh, FPS boost, excuse me, coming out soon. So let's just wheel back to how Microsoft created the new Xbox FPS feature. Now this is all thanks to Colt Eastwood's YouTube channel, so of course you can find that linked below. And they discussed how this was actually done with the Xbox Program Management Director Jason Ronald. And he said, quote, when we developed the technique, the first thing we did was look across the catalogue and said, what games do we believe that we can actually make this technique work for? We identified a large set of games and then we started testing the games to make sure the games actually play as good as they should. In some cases, there were some games that we had on the list that we discovered would play great, but occasionally 
we'd see animations run twice as fast, or maybe the engine was running so fast that it would break gameplay. And he went on to explain that they discovered that the CPU and GPU on the Xbox Series X and S consoles were essentially entering an idle state when running older games because they complete their tasks quickly. So essentially they took that realisation, ran with it and came up with a method to use that spare power to increase the frame rate of older titles. Now obviously as Jason himself said there, there was the sort of issue where certain games ran too well where the animations would just look weird because they're running twice as fast or maybe there would be an issue like we had, I believe it was Dark Souls 2 um, where the weapon durability was tied to frame rate so there had to be an update because the if you ran it at higher frame rates the weapons degraded twice as fast I mean I'm going purely off of memory here, it was something along those lines anyway but obviously they had the issues of publisher approval every game tested had to be considered and obviously had to get the publisher's sign off. So obviously that's why they've gone with a small manageable group of titles, which is more than fair enough. I think this is really interesting to be honest. You know, backwards compatibility has one one of the bigger draws for Xbox generation. And obviously we have seeing uh, backwards compatibility finally on PS5 to PS4. We did not see it on the PS4, obviously. But it's still really nice to see this FPS boost. Nice to see some older titles getting some love for those of you playing on Xbox. But we're going to move away from the console now to a bunch of Intel stuff as we have quite a bit from Rocket Lake, first of which is the 11600K. So if anyone watching who's been keeping their ear to the ground when it comes to all things Rocket Lake, you probably know that when it comes to the higher end, you know, 11900K and so on, we've heard quite a bit of leaks and of course official information from Intel, but the 11600K is still shrouded in mystery. But we have our very first benchmark today, and thanks to Leakbench over on Twitter for sharing this as a Geekbench result, and we can finally get a clear picture at least. So, we see 6 cores, 12 threads, base clock of 3.9 GHz and a boost of 4.9, and this was tested on a Gigabyte Z490M and 2133 MHz of DDR4 memory, which is <laughs> which is not great to be honest because it does mean that the score was definitely affected by this relatively slow memory configuration, but we can still get some information from this even if we need to keep that caveat of the 2133 MHz uh, DDR4 in mind. So in terms of the score, we do see a single core score of 1565 and a multi-core score of 6220. Just for a little bit of context, that makes it slower than the 5600X in the single core and the same applies to the multi-core. However, when you compare it to Comet Lake, we do see an impressive increase in single core performance, 19% to be exact. But for the multi-core, there was definitely something weird going on because the 10600K, which of course is the last of the current generation, I suppose, was actually faster than this result, 13% faster to be exact. Now we are expecting Intel to formally announce the line of processors on March 15th, so obviously we'll most likely get some official benchmarks and so on from the company then, but this is still a nice look at what we can expect performance wise for the 11600K but as always this is just a single benchmark and we should wait for more results before really making any final judgments on this particular part. And speaking of Rocket Lake before I move on to our final topic just want to quickly highlight that we actually have some Rocket Lake S series packaging leaked. Now I know this isn't exactly oh my god looks so exciting let's run around screaming but it's nice to see because the packaging at least for the 10900K is uh, a bit unusual to say the least, we did see some unusual uh, packaging before of course, but still nice to see them trying something different at least and of course we can see the brand new logo here for the Intel Core series. Just wanted to quickly show you guys the new box art here before we move on to our final topics. So let's dive in to our final pieces of news for Intel today and this particular video. Now I've already mentioned that the date of March 15th is apparently going to be of importance for Intel and this is according to an article from HK, HK, excuse me, epc.com and of course you can find that linked below and according to the article we are going to be seeing the 11th gen core uh, Rocket Lake processors be launched on March 15th and Intel have only so far confirmed that it will be introduced in the first quarter. Obviously, March 15th is in the first quarter, so that does line up. 
but they also had some very interesting information on Old Lake, and they have also confirmed that the announcement of Old Lake is going to be happening in September. Now, if that sounds familiar, this is not the first time we've heard this, but apparently, according to their information, we are going to be the, seeing the actual launch happen in December. But the more interesting piece of information, I find at least, is that they have confirmed that Old Lake S is going to be based on the 10NM Superfin, and, sorry, enhanced Superfin, instead of just 10NM Superfin architecture. So, enhanced Superfin is obviously an upgrade over, over the just Superfin architecture, and it does mean it will be more power efficient than Tiger Lake. But again, we have heard this before that we will be seeing the 10NM enhanced super fin for older Lake. But the most, most interesting thing here, at least according to this report, is that, well, we are going to be seeing a 20% IPC gain for Golden Cove over Willow Cove. Now, as I'm sure you guys are very aware of at this point, Older Lake is obviously a bit of a departure for Intel. It is going to be seeing high efficiency small cores and high performance big cores. Obviously very similar to the big dot little architecture. Now, according to the same article, we are going to be seeing the big cores, which are Golden Cove, offer a 20% IPC gain over Willow Cove, which is what we see currently in uh, Tiger Lake. And we're going to be seeing Gracemont apparently offer a similar IPC to Sky Lake. Now, I don't know what that really means. It's not really clear if they mean it's going to have a similar efficiency to Sky Lake or if it's going to be an increase over the pre uh, previous series. We are expecting to see an overall IPC increase of 16 to 18%. But, of course, as always, we should wait and see for official information. Take our rumours with a pinch of salt TM, as always. Now, the site also further claims that we may see it be delayed until 2022. But, obviously, again, we'll most likely get confirmation of what the target release date is from Intel when this is officially unveiled. Now, obviously, it would be unfortunate for that to happen. There is obviously a quite a bit of excitement and anticipation surrounding Old Lake, obviously, because it is such a interesting departure from how Intel normally design their processors. But, of course, we should wait and see for confirmation from Intel before we write too many I'm sad cards about this. Anyway, guys, that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, your support is highly appreciated. Do remember to like and subscribe, and of course, click that bell icon to actually get notified when we post a video, because YouTube's going to YouTube, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.